Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Happy Pianist talk show again. So I'm Mark from Happy Pianist, and today I'm very happy to welcome back our favorite teacher from last week TV uh, Facebook live show back to our channel again. And he's also Mr. Mark Yo. So today we have both Marks and Marks and two Marks here to share with you more about music, more about music learning. I was going to start about 8.30 about a few more minutes so we have still some time for some quick warm-up so let me say hi to mark hello mark hello hi mark it's nice to hello. see you again okay great to see you again i hope you had dinner already yeah i had a really good dinner okay so you know, i i think oh. it's i still think it's a little strange like calling another person mark i, I have very few friends who are named mark the <laughs> most is marcus so it, i it's i still find it weird like i'm calling myself yeah, you are talking to me right now. So you're talking to yes. me and yourself. <laughs> oh, okay, talking so to a handsome version of myself. Yeah. So this topic, this today, today's topic is a uh, is a requested uh, heavily uh, requested from our participants for our last week uh, Facebook Live. So it's about how to practice effectively. So today's session is uh, kind of a bit different. Instead of just presenting and sharing with you, so we also got Mark, Mark, our teacher to do a live demonstration for you on his keyboard to show you how to practice, how to read the scores, uh, how to do markings, what do, should you write, what should you look out for. So it's kind of a, a, a real live practice, a, a showcase of how you should work on your practice uh, session right at home. So for this part, later on, we'll uh, be turning to the keyboard. So for yourself, uh, looking at the Facebook Live, uh, you may not need a keyboard, don't worry. Okay, you don't need to like move yourself to the piano beside you. It doesn't matter. You just uh, come and learn, observe how is it done. Later on, you can come back to watch the recording or you want the notes, you can, you'll be sending out in the Telegram chat, then you can refer back and then you can start your own practice session that way. Okay. All yeah, right. Uh, okay. For those of you who have been very eagle-eyed, you probably noticed the background a little different today. Uh, what I have here is my ah. keyboard. If you want to see the what it looks like, it's a full-sized keyboard and it's a uh, it's actually a Roland RD800 uh, performance keyboard so this is one of my favorite babies and this has gotten me through very very tough times especially with this whole COVID situation so just to share with you uh, I I actually use this keyboard to perform on uh, to perform my final recital for my master's program so it's a big step down from from a full Steinway grand unfortunately mm -hmm. but uh i'm extremely glad and relieved that i managed to use i i had access to a, a keyboard at least when i was forced to come back home early before the mm -hmm. before i graduated and honestly i'm really sorry about it you know mark like i i have um i don't think i told you this before like i had to come home early right and the thing is my school the music school bought a new steinway d a full nine foot wow. steinway d for the mm -hmm. spring semester and I I did not manage to try it. I was so close to trying it. The recital would have been the first time playing on the brand new piano, but like the everything closed, you know, so I was forced to come back. Wow. So it's unfortunate. So let's say uh, nothing happens, everything is normal. You'll be performing on the Steinway piano for your graduation performance, am I right? Yes, that's right. Uh, that would have been a I mean, I would have invited people over to, to watch and I was actually planning to try out live streaming the recital, even though uh, I think it would have probably been like 4 a.m. here or something like that. But at least, wow. um, you know, at least uh, you, people can still watch uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the video after it's after the live show has ended. Right. So that was that was the plan. But no one expected was or saw this coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we are about uh, two more minutes. Oh, you're two minutes to eight thirty. Very good. Okay, so if you are streaming in right now, today's topic we'll be talking about how to practice effectively. So practicing is a uh, is part and parcel of being a musician. All teachers, all students, we know something called practice. We we don't say we love to practice. Uh. We all need to practice. Correct, not? Okay? We may not like it, but we all know we need to practice. But how to practice correctly, effectively, in a way that you really use your time well, that you practice well, that will be helpful to you. It's not about sitting down in front of a piano and play and play and play and play and play, play 10 hours a day, 
Does it work that way? May not be lah. Okay, so today we have Mark here to share with you how to use your good, good uh, use your time effectively so you achieve more while practicing. So let me give a quick introduction of ourselves first. So I'm Mark from the Happy Pianist. So Happy Pianist does is we are a platform of piano teachers and piano students. And so what we do here is match piano students to piano teachers and kids art lessons with them. So we have been doing this coming for I think for the six year already. So for myself, I've been working with Mark since I don't know how many years, four or five years back. I think back then uh, you since, have, since uh, 2016. Since 16, uh, okay. Back then I think yeah. you have not got your uh, masters. Uh. So now I must call you masters uh, mark already. <laughs> so a bit, still a bit still a normal guy. <laughs> okay. So Mark is also our teacher, it's a full-time piano teacher. So he recently graduated from the University of Illinois. Yeah. And uh, masters in piano performance. And he also previously a MOE teacher uh, teaching English and music in uh, government schools. So today, he will be sharing with you how to practice effectively. So let me bring on the screen right now. Ah, correct. Okay. So if you are joining us, okay, take a seat. So this session will be about one hour plus, one hour or so. So if you have any questions about practicing, if you are stressful or you find that your practice is not effective, just key your questions into the uh, chat box later on and we will read your questions and bring out for Mark to answer for you. So to kick start this session, can we do a quick uh, test or not? Just to take, make sure that the audio and the sound and the video are all working. So okay, so very uh, simple. Just, a, can you, mm, just 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 a little audio. thing. Okay. Yeah. So I need to do a quick check, lah. Okay. So mm. Mark, you are in Amokyo, right? Yes. Okay, Amokyo. So if you like Mark, Amokyo, take Amokyo. If you are watching from overseas, I know Mark has many overseas friends. Okay, in US, in Europe. Russian friends, okay. Where you, where you are, you just type in where you are from, so with that we know that you are everything is working well for you. Okay, so I of course my US now, friends uh, will be sleeping at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think my US friends will be sleeping now. So uh, US, uh, I think now US maybe midnight, uh, or rather uh, early, oh, early yes. in the morning, uh, wow. So yes, if you have friends so. in the morning, just to support you, not bad, leh. Okay, now, now it's Singapore night time, so maybe in the US it's uh, morning time. Okay, I know some people are watching from uh, Singapore, very good. Jenny, Jenny is from, I think I mail you the way. Uh, you. I think it's from uh, Clementi at the area. <laughs> okay, Apple, hello from Singapore. Okay, north side, east side, west side, I think everyone is Singapore. I'm sure hopefully that you're also at home. Okay, even though I, I know that uh, circuit breaker over, we can all go out. Okay, but uh, I, I went out, I went out. Okay, but NTUC only. <laughs> so I believe Mark you also went out a few times just to have some fresh air. <laughs> yep. Okay. As much as I love staying home, I still have to go out sometime to get some food. Very good, very good. Okay, since that people are responding, very good. So I, I believe that you can hear it quite clearly. Okay. So Mark, are you ready? Yes, I am very, very ready. Let me just keep this. Okay. Yep, I'm good to go. Okay, Mark is ready to go. All right. So today we will talk, talk about this topic, how to practice effectively. So Mark will be sharing five steps that you already know. No, that means you maybe you are doing already. And then five more ideas to help you improve further. So something may be new. Some things may, you may not heard before. Something you may heard before. Doesn't matter. If you can, just uh, learn as much as you can and then see how you can implement it into your own practice schedule. So in a way that you can learn new stuff and also improve along the way. Okay, so Mark, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, good evening, everybody. So, hello, many people who are with us today. So, thank you so much for joining us. I am glad that you have forsaken your Friday date nights, factor nights, and whatever plans you might have had just to join us and entertain yourselves with interesting information. So, uh, I'm glad to be able to do this. And honestly, I'm a little nervous because I I have not played on a live video before. So this is the first time and uh, it's pretty exciting. So um, the, the topic that I'm choosing today is uh, how to practice effectively. And I understand that this is a very, very, very common topic for almost every teacher. Every teacher would have said something to their student about how do you practice well, how you practice smartly, okay? and um, there, there will be some points that you 
are probably familiar with, and there are even probably some points that you might be, it might might be a bit controversial or not not very suitable for you. But take it with a pinch of salt, and um, these are just some ideas you can try play around with. Okay. Uh, the thing is, I am catering this discussion to all kinds of musicians. So I actually changed the title from learning piano to learning music because I realized uh, some some of you guys in our audience last week. Uh, you play other instruments, right? So mm-hmm. I don't discriminate in, okay, maybe in a time of... A, maybe you can do a quick, quick uh, poll, uh, okay? So what instruments do you play? What instrument do you play? Okay, Mark will be, Mark is a pianist, uh, so maybe you can just key in the chat box below. What instrument do you play? Okay, if you play piano, you're typing piano, it's okay. You're playing, uh, you're a singer, you're typing vocal, uh, vocal, okay? You're a flute, okay? You're typing flute, yeah. So I believe uh, whatever, you, whatever instrument that you key in, Mark can maybe adjust a little bit about his sharing and then can uh, uh, customize you know, some of his session to address your instrument. Okay, but I believe uh, most of the time, most of the time uh, we are all, uh, what do I mean? Most of the instruments you play, whatever instrument you play, I believe whatever Mark shared with you today is applicable, am I right now? I believe so. I mean the the technique of the exact technique of it might not mm. be exactly the same, but uh, the the general idea, uh, and the general music musical idea is probably similar. Mm. So we we have flute mostly piano. Okay, so if anyone if there's anyone who plays multiple instruments, raise your hands. I'm a self proclaimed percussionist as well. I cannot wow. hide this fact, or else uh, there are people who will be annoyed at me hiding this wow not bad wow piano is a per- percussion so why would this you love hitting things la? <laughs> i i actually do not like hitting things <laughs> it's a long story we, we, we can have a chit chat session one day and we can talk oh, about okay. this so Good. Okay. How, so the strange lesson, story as to how i got into this hmm. wow, interesting okay. We all go on. okay so oh all most of them are piano and one flute apple yeah apple nice to see you again so, okay, good. Most of the things you share, maybe I think will be very relevant to them. Okay, thank you so Great. much for responses. All right. Hey, Jasper, triangle, don't lie. <laughs> so, we have a brass player <laughs> today. Okay, very good. Brass and piano. <laughs> for, for record's sake, I, I think I play triangle better than you, Jasper. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, shall, shall we begin? I think yeah, we, sure. can, Let's go. we can start. Yeah. So th- thank you for, for joining us again. So um, let's, let's just start off with this. This is, uh, there's, there's a lot of things to cover in, in today's discussion. And it was actually pretty difficult to condense it into like seven, seven slides worth of content, but uh, I try my best. And um, if any of you need, need to just want to take down notes like studious students, Feel free to do so, or if not, you could uh, join uh, uh, the Happy Pianist Telegram chat to, to access the, mm-hmm. the, uh, the soft copy of this presentation, right? So the first thing I'm going to dive straight into is, is usually the first thing that I teach all of my students. Okay, so the fact that playing music is basically multitasking. Whenever you play any song, whether it's classical or pop or death metal on piano for some reason, Chinese songs, Korean songs, you are multitasking, all right? So most of the time people, students like you and me a few years ago, we focus a lot on notes. We focus a lot on rhythm. We want to get all our fingering right. We want to get all our notes right, okay? But, uh, and then the next thing is probably dynamics. Dynamics is uh, basically the volume of uh, how loud you play or how soft you play, okay? and. The next uh, items are a little bit more, I would say advanced, is something to think about once you get your your notes settled. Okay, it's things like articulation. How how do you express your notes? Are they short, are they long and smooth? Or are they jabby and forceful? Or is it heavy or light? There's many, many ways to express a note. Okay, how you phrase a line, okay, do you connect it? Or do you make it similar to how a singer sings it? how you express all of this okay and then perhaps the next two most uh challenging things 
to, to multitask on a piano would be your balance. Okay, a balance on a piano is basically how you, uh, how loud are some notes are as compared to other notes. Okay, you can have instances where your right hand is louder than your left hand, or there are some instances where your left hand takes the, the main tune, the main melody, and your right hand goes softer. Okay, this is actually a way harder skill to learn, and it takes time to, to get used to this Saikumoto uh, challenge. Okay, I find that I think this is one of the biggest hurdles that my students have faced so far. And then the next one is tone. Tone is one of the biggest issues that I have been dealing with for the past two years of my studies. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very simple thing of how to make your sound sound nice. And it's not easy to, to do that. It takes a lot of, of feeling. It takes a lot of uh, understanding how much force to use on, on the piano. And especially for us pianists, since most of us are piano players here, um, when you go for performances, it's, it's a very a very annoying scenario because you can't bring your own piano most of the time. You have to perform on someone else's piano or a piano that belongs to a recital hall, for example. So, you know, and when you change piano, you know, you're not used to the one that you play at home. Um, it's a different ball game altogether. So that's another topic for another day, but that's uh, how, you, how you may have to deal with uh, understanding tone, right? Uh, the next one is tempo. Okay, how fast you go, how slow you go. So you might want to practice at different speeds. Okay, and number eight is, I, sh I should have actually put number eight as number one, uh, as the first thing, posture. It's one of the basic things that people may tend to forget when they practice. I have seen some students who, who cross legs and practice a piano, cross leg on a chair, on this piano stool. It's uh, quite a headache, actually. So posture is actually a thing, and it's a... Uh, it's also important in other instruments as well. Okay, and the last point is more for uh, specific uh, specific uh, points that uh, that other instruments might deal with. So bowing is basically how uh, string players bow, how they hold the position of the bow on the right hand, and how much force they use on the on when they bow the string. Okay, vibrato applies to all the instruments except the piano, unfortunately. Okay, how you vibrate the sound to make it sound nicer. Okay, embouchure is more for more for winds, uh, woodwinds and brass players, how you form the shape of your your mouth before you put the mouthpiece over your lips. Mm -hmm. okay, the airspeed and and the aperture size more for more for brass players. How fast do you want your airspeed to be will affect the sound that you get okay, and how big the, the aperture of your mouth hole is when you're blowing through your instrument. So all these, uh, okay, but this this will be something for for Apple. Is applicable for you because you're a flute player. Mm -hmm. So these are things that you want to take note of when you are practicing. There's so many things, and me just listing. I mean, just listing this out alone is it looks pretty daunting, but there's a there's a way to get past this. Okay, so if you look at all these things, these nine nine points all together, it's virtually impossible to pay attention to everything, to all the factors at the same time when you are practicing music. And most of the time, people overlook this thing. And when they practice, their mindset is basically, I want to get this to sound as best as I can. Generic idea, it must sound perfect. That's what a lot of uh, students would like to do. So do I. Everybody wants to do that. Okay? But we can't do that all the time, right? So. If you are trying to focus on everything, you are most likely to mess up at least one or more, okay, when you're focusing on something else, something else messes up. Okay, so this is normal. It doesn't mean that you're a bad musician. It doesn't mean that you're a terrible player. Okay, it's normal. It's normal not to be able to multitask, right? So this first point is just to, to set the stage of this presentation that, you know, music is hard. Let's just face it. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to play a song well because of all these factors. Okay, so let's dive straight into what you probably know. Okay, for those of you who are uh, piano teachers, you are probably nodding your head to yourself now. For those of you who are piano students or you're learning the piano, you might have heard some, some of these points. Okay, namely, practice slowly. Don't go at your actual speed. 
because if you lose control, okay, that's the first thing you, you usually hear from your teachers. Okay, the next thing is use a metronome to keep time. So what exactly is a metronome? It is a device, or it used to be a device that is uh, that goes tick-tock, tick-tock, and it, uh, it sets the speed, okay, an annoying, annoying clicking speed for you to follow. Do you have one okay. do you have a metronome to show them or, I, or later on? I, I used to have a metronome. I used to. Okay, there, there are three types of metronomes, if yeah. any of you are uh, new to the piano. Um, the first one is, if you Google, okay, you'll probably see a, a triangular box with yeah. a stick that goes left and right, like a pendulum. Okay, so that is the, the old analog metronome. Okay, and uh, how it's powered is that it's, there's a spring that you wind at the, at the side of the metronome to, to let the devices turn, the gears turn inside, and it uses the physics of a pendulum to swing, right? And the second metronome, there, which is a slightly more modern, is the digital one, which most students of the 90s and early 2000s were probably forced to buy by their teachers. And uh, the last one, I mean, in today's... Uh, oh, you have metronome, nice. Yeah, so I'm, I, I brought in one. Lah. Okay, so for those uh, who are not very sure how a metronome looks like, I think we can just show a quick one, okay? Yeah, I think this is quite 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 a this is a very traditional metronome. Okay, I believe all teach all our teachers are or we used to learn last time. We all started from this. Why not? Yes. <laughs> Over the well, years, I think Jenny also said there's an app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that's the third one. Nowadays there's a there's mm. an app. Uh, you can just download any any metronome app on the phone. Most of them are free. You know, okay. you just need to figure out how to use it. Mm. Yeah, I got a story, I got a story to share. This the this um. analog metronome, right? The old metronome was something that my, my teacher, my professor, forced me to use sometimes during his uh, during his lessons with me, especially when he got annoyed with me for not sounding nice or being bad at some certain technique. You know, he will he will make me uh, he will make me switch on the metronome on my own. The metronome will be on his piano. And then I'll I'll be he'll ask me to just switch on to the tempo you think you want to to play at. And I'll be forced to slowly adjust the thing. And then the most annoying thing about this metronome, right, is the thing about old, uh, older analog instruments. They once there is wear and tear, sometimes the, the, the weights inside become a little bit lopsided. Correct. Or maybe correct, correct. maybe because the metronome dropped or something. I don't know. So mm. there were every time he made he made me play using the metronome, I, I get very exasperated. But obviously I can't show it because it's my prop. <laughs> so what happened, right, is that this metronome will the timing is slightly off. It's not exactly tuck, 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 tuck. It's, mm. it's um, one of the sides is lopsided. So you get a very, very, very subtle tuck, 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 tuck. I mean, I'm saying it in a very obvious manner, but okay. something along that line. So mm. I, I would get very confused. And then if I play according to the metronome, I will sound wrong. But then if I play correctly, and I don't follow the metronome, I also sound wrong because I'm not following the metronome. <laughs> so it was honestly that there was a big uh, motivation to practice very hard because I do not want to get to a point where it makes me use the metronome. <laughs> purposely, la, purposely to embarrass you. <laughs> Maybe, I think so. Yeah. Up to this day. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, just moving on. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, we, we will talk about the metronome later on. It's one of my, my points. Mm -hmm. okay, and number three, you probably hear this the most. Practice with your hands separate. Do not play both hands together when you're learning your songs because it's difficult. You don't have control. The learning pace will be very slow. Okay, so that's the most common one. And number four, which I think is very, very important. Uh, don't run through the entire song or, don't, or the entire piece. Break it up into shorter segments maybe in four bars, maybe in eight bars, okay? Perhaps maybe in multiple sections, like if your song is two minutes long, break it up into four segments of 30 seconds, something. Stop at the end of the phrase or something like that. Right, that, that's very good advice. And the last one would be to have very efficient practice. Okay, so I will dwell into this later. I'll elaborate more on this. So. The idea that playing for five minutes well is actually better than playing than just running through mindlessly for one hour. And I strongly attest to that. Okay. Uh, as 
as a student in a music school, I was forced to, to put this to the test because I had to attend classes and I had to I had to continue my practice as well. So there are some days where I have um I have a 10 minute break. Now, it's actually about about half an hour or one hour, but I had to run some admin, run some errand, grab lunch. By the time uh, I have to go for another class, I still have 10 minutes to spare. So what I'll do, because I don't have time to practice for the rest of the day, I'll run up to the practice room, okay, and then I will I will decide exactly which which little segment of the piece I want to to practice. And now I'll just do it for 10 minutes. And that's all. 10 minutes for 10 minutes for practice for the day. It sounds it sounds like I'm almost breaking the law as a music student, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, sometimes when you are so packed with, with things, with, mm -hmm. with commitments, it's, you have no choice. You have to to still get it in, you have to still sound good. Oh, very yeah. good. That means 10 minutes work for a must for a student working on his master's uh, degree in music. So you see, it's not about the hours of uh, practice, it's the efficiency in that few short minutes uh, of practice. So this part, I believe uh, later Mark will demonstrate for you. He also have a sample score to show you how to take notes, how to look out for parts to, to, you know, to indicate and so help you in your practice. Okay? Yeah. But, uh, but just a disclaimer, uh, as, uh, if mm. you're a full-time music student, you, you cannot do 10 minute practice every day. It's not enough. Mm. You, will not, you will not pass your, your, your music program. Okay, this is just you know in, in desperate times mm -hmm. okay so uh moving on okay i now have five other ideas okay that can be adding on to the previous points about what you probably know okay so the first idea okay and um this this applies to all levels if you are totally greenhorn in the piano you just started learning yesterday this is for you as well and even for the most professional of musicians out there, this is for you as well. Okay, write on your scores. There's no harm writing on your scores. Use a pencil, use a pen, doesn't matter. Okay, what you need to write, fingering of which finger to use, especially for your uh, for piano players, for your notes. Okay, or sometimes you may have fingering changes that uh, the score doesn't say, or the score is score fingering not good enough, you have a better one. Okay. Um, another example is to have uh, dynamic changes. Sometimes, the, most of the time, music doesn't show volume everywhere. If not, that's not music, that's just a rule book. Okay, so you might want to add in your own so that you can remember. At this point in time, when I play this, I need to get louder, I need to get softer. Okay, and any other reminders? I'll, I'll show you some examples later. Okay, mm -hmm. but gen in general, the point is you will tend to write more fingering or dynamic markings earlier on. When you are just learning your song or your piece okay and but as you progress along you get better with your notes your rhythms it's just like the what i showed you in the, the first slide just now okay you will start to write more high level things like expressions musical expressions and detailed articulation and phrasing as well okay the, I, i'll show you the example later okay so and the last thing for this is that if you play slowly i know some Piano students will will argue with me till the cows come home with this point, because they refuse to to, to look at the score. They like to look at their hands. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play it slow enough, right, you can actually look at the score and be reminded of what you wrote. And being reminded of what you wrote is practice, mm. because you are developing a good habit. Okay, so I will I will tell you about playing slow so later. Mm -hmm. Right, so here uh, I will share this. Sorry, I better share this screen. With you. Okay. Um, so you'll be sharing a music score, am I right? Yes. Okay, so Mark has prepared a sample music piece and he will share with you how to take notes, how to draw your music score. So this is a digital, I think it's a software that allows you to feature your music, music score. Oh, this is just a PDF, a just PDF. a PDF document. Yeah, I have. For, uh, I have I'm changing to to digital because um, because I don't so I don't need to carry so many books for my lessons. That's why I switch to digital. <laughs> Not bad, safe environment as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, do you mind make it bigger, like yes. zoom in? Yeah. Okay. okay. So just to give you an example, hmm. this if you can you see my mouse? Okay. 
Okay, I think they can see, they can see. Okay, if you okay. can, if you can see a uh, mark screen, you just take, you just type in, can see, I can see. Okay, because he's going to use the mouse to draw and point out things on the screen to show you where to look out, what to write, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like people can see. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, this thing is basically my, I, I decided on a tempo marking on how fast I want to, to practice. This is the practice tempo between 110 to 132 beats per minute. Okay, so first thing, most of the time you will see things like uh, be soft, don't go so loud. Okay, don't, don't whack the note. Okay. <laughs> do not jab. Do, do not jab. Apparently I got scolding for this last time. Huh. But it did, I, I, didn't, I didn't fake this through, okay? Like th this was something that I learned uh, two years ago, one and a half years ago. So okay. all these instructions are real. Okay, so don't rush. Okay, the ones in red were actually written earlier when I was learning the piece. So this is an example of some fingering changes. Five three, five three, I didn't like it. So I changed it to one three, one three instead. Okay, get louder. These are dynamic markings. Okay, so this is an example of, of how you can write certain things in. More examples of fingering changes. Mm -hmm. cancellations I don't like the fingering change all right so yeah and if you look at the blue color ones and eventually the purple color ones those are done later so the, the score doesn't look so dark uh, mm -hmm. so they contain maybe higher level things like roll roll the arm don't accent this because yeah that's bad sound like a cello sound like a bow cello Things like that. When I read, when I look at the score and I, when I practice it, I'm reminded of this all the time. And when you're reminded, you get a good sound in your head. And when you get a good sound in your head, you get better. That's mm, the point. Okay. okay, so here's another example. This is a more extreme one. And I, wow. because I use this for my recent uh, final recital, I have very terrible advice, uh, not terrible advice, I have very good advice here, although some of them are pretty harsh. Longer trill, too slow, trill faster with all caps because like I kept repeating the same mistakes. Rehearsal tempo. Okay, and certain things that I need to remember to get my head straight when before I even start the piece. Mm. These are some examples. Use the shoulder, don't break this part. Suddenly loud. Okay. So these are some examples. Right? So if any of you have a certain comments or, or things, experiences that your teacher forced you to write certain things or questions about writing, uh, do feel free to write in the comments as well. Uh, I know not everybody uses digital scores, so by all means use pencil on your own hard copy. If not, just get color pencils, it's fine. Okay, I got a question. I think yes. this question can be quite common. Uh, sometimes when you when you teach, right, uh, you, you, you write as a teacher, you write the notes for your students, you know, emphasize on this, this and that. Sometimes you do a change of fingering. Then sometimes, mm. sometimes uh, the students like to rely on the numbers to play the notes. So end up when they go home, they write the notes with all the numbers. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Then oh. the, whole, the whole music score is numbers or something that they can relate. So, so they look at the numbers and play the music. Okay, mm. uh, okay uh, don't feel guilty. Lah. Okay, uh, if any teachers or any students doing this, uh, I think it's very common. Uh. Sometimes we want to be faster. Uh. So since we can read numbers faster, so I write, I write everything numbers. And then I just uh, read the numbers and play play, play the play the piece. Lah. But also means uh, once you remove the numbers, uh, then it's like back to square one. They, they can't, they, they struggle to, to read the notes again. So what, what's your thoughts on this? Um, honestly, I have not had a student like that, but I had a similar situation where one of my students, I found out because my this particular student likes to voice her, his or her um, thoughts. So mm. I, I actually heard him or her singing numbers before. Mm. So she <laughs> say out or sing the numbers. Then I was like, huh. <laughs> but she didn't write all the numbers down or he didn't write all the numbers down in the score. But uh, I think it's similar to what you're saying. Mm. Uh, my, my advice is don't do that. 
Okay. I don't really recommend it because it's mm. it. I don't think numbers is a reliable system. Mm. Okay, because once you get to a higher level, uh, when you need to to change fingering so many times, uh, how are you? Okay, just just a simple example. Okay, one, two, three, four, five is your fingering, right? Yeah. Not all the time you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and maybe turn one time. Sometimes you have to turn so many times, right? That the number just doesn't make sense anymore. It just looks like some chain of random code. You know, so as you get to a high level, uh, you will start to find that that it's going to be very uncomfortable to understand mm. your numbers. You know, so do not memorize my numbers. I, I don't recommend it. It's either <laughs> memorize by notes or or come up with some other system like the Sophie system. So, so yeah. for taking notes, uh, it's more of the, the parts that you really need to take note of and for that specific part only, right? Uh, Can you say that? It, it really depends. Um, now that because I play more often mm. than last time, because I was so busy teaching last time, uh, I feel that I don't only write for this instant. I don't know if I'm answering your question, but mm. uh, if I write this down right like take for example this piece this is something that i learned one and a half years ago i performed this once but as an example if i actually relearn this piece again now i would have forgotten a lot of it and i have to relearn it and all these markings right actually help me get back on track much faster mm -hmm. yeah as compared to if i leave a score blank right i i can tell you firsthand experience because i tried to relearn scores which were blank I totally don't know what I did. I asked myself, like, oh my gosh, what did I do the last time when I played this difficult part? I, I have no recollection of it. I don't know what kind of weird fingering I use because it's somehow not working now. It's happened to me before. So, yeah, unnecessary stress that I added to myself. So uh, that's why I put this as idea number one because it's easy to do and it's it will pay off, especially with, like once you are sick of it, sick of this song, but two years down the road, you want to play again. But you're gonna play even better, you're gonna play mm -hmm. because you're a more mature musician now. You know, that will happen to you most most likely. So that's writing all of these these seemingly annoying things down will help you in the long run. Mm. That's why okay, so so to do a quick summary is to write down the important points on your playing and not so much on every note that you see on the music sheet. Yes. Okay, very good, very good. Thanks for showing your music score. Okay, come, let's come back to, I got some questions like Jenny said that the teacher don't allow writing of notes. She like us to sight read. Very good, you got a good teacher. Okay, get you to sight read, okay? not ask you to write every note. And where Ying Yi asked, say that uh, he start, she started writing fingering on every note in every piece she played. Okay, maybe if you are at the starting phrase, then maybe uh, it could be helpful. But I think uh, along the way, it's good to transit out of writing all the fingers on every note. That'll be more helpful. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, let, let, let's address this. Um, for Jenny, your teacher doesn't allow that. She likes you to say read. Great. Let me, I think let me, you, have yeah, a, good. you have a teacher who, who emphasizes a lot on side reading. That's great. Um, however, it depends on what you're playing. If you are... The thing is, right, if you are learning a song, right, they are going to be practicing for your teacher every week. Technically, that's not side reading anymore, right? So, I mean, there's muscle memory involved already. If you're playing something for the second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth time for your teacher, you know, that's not really side reading anymore. So, yeah, but if you talk about new pieces, the first time you play, yeah, side reading. Maybe second time you play, uh, yeah, okay, get, get better at the side reading. Yeah, but beyond that fourth time, I think it's something that you are developing the muscle memory already. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it depends on how how your teacher is delivering, uh, whatever song or piece that she's he or she is delivering. Yeah, I, I hope that answers it. And um, recently started writing fingering on every note. I think that's okay when you first start off. Maybe OCD, you want to write everything. That's fine. Okay. I I'm somebody who likes that kind of completeness as well but um after a while you realize that well at least for me i start to find that it's very time consuming and like once the writing became a chore and then the once i wanted to start to write other things like dynamics like phrasing then the piece gets very 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 messy 
is unnecessary cluttered. So I started to remove all the, the redundant kind of fingering. So perhaps that this, I don't know, you're going through a phase now, that's fine. I'm not saying it's wrong, but eventually, you know, don't don't uh don't be afraid to to evolve as a musician. Mm. You will always be evolving, you'll be learning something new. Right. So what next one? What happens when you go for exam and you need to erase your notes? Uh dire. <laughs> okay, so um, this Did this one, I'm not sure. <laughs> I never yeah, erase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I actually erase. I, I, yeah. I'm in the habit of erasing because my when, when I was young, my teacher used to ask me to erase. Then, you um, know, just without question, I'll, I'll do that too. Okay. Um, I think it's, honestly, I don't think it's a, a, a rule to erase your notes. It is just that um, if, you, if you have written so many things, right, and so much scribbles, and maybe one time you got so exasperated, you circle onto the page, got a hole, that kind, right? But you circle very furiously. Uh, it's very likely that your your teacher may be afraid that the, the examiner may, may see your score, happen to look at your score and like think that, oh, you, you, you're not actually a very good player, but you have, you know, you went through so much problems. But honestly, I don't think it's a problem. There isn't a, a law at all. Honestly, I would rather I would rather have all those notes down. Whatever you notes, okay, notes is a bad word. Writings or fingerings or whatever you want to jot down, it's fine. It really isn't a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Good. it's yeah, not really against the <laughs> Yeah, sorry, again. Yeah, so that's for idea one on yeah. writing down the markings on the score. Yeah, all right. So Right, write all or whatever you want. It's good. Mm. You're gonna draw a nice piggy picture on the right. It's fine. Whatever works for you. You wanna decorate it. It's okay. As long as it motivates you and it's useful. Okay. Next idea number two. Okay, this this is a slightly complicating one that will take some time. Focus on one or two factors when you're practicing a segment of a song or a piece. Okay, this applies to everybody. I tell this to my my beginner students as well. Don't play the whole page, play four bars, you know. So uh, one or two factors, meaning that if I go back to this slide, these factors, mm. okay, don't focus on everything. Okay. So what would you want to focus on when you first start off? You would typically want to get your notes correct, okay? Every, everybody would try to do that. That's fine, okay? But however, I want to add on by saying, do not neglect the fingering. Okay, I believe this works for this works for for woodwind players as well, and and violin players, string players, because uh, if you keep practicing with different fingerings, alternate fingerings, you are not really practicing. You are changing, you are developing muscle memory, and you are redeveloping muscle memory with a different set of instructions. Okay, so do not neglect fingering. If I if I am learning a new piece, I will write the fingering down as early as I can. Once I know that, okay, this is suitable, I'll write it down. Slow, it's, it's very annoying. The, the starting phase is very, very slow. You'll feel like you're not getting anywhere, but that's the way you want to build it, ground up. Okay, rather than rush into it, learn it wrongly, you have to relearn, waste time. I don't like that. I used to do that and I realized like, a lot of my hours went into all these wasted practices. It's not, not nice. Okay, and the next thing, uh, once you start to get the notes right, you want to get the rhythm right as well, okay, without, um, without being affected by the notes. So what do I mean by this? Okay, I think this is the part where I will demonstrate. Uh, mm. Okay, I will share screen with you. Okay, so right now, Mark is going to show you how to practice live. So for my side, I'll give you the entire full screen. That means you can still hear me, but you won't see my face. Okay, give me a while. Huh? Okay, Mark. Yes. Okay, so now they can see you completely. So oh, you okay, okay. show okay, so you show them how to how to do this and uh, okay, okay, you, yeah. I think you need to adjust your 
I think okay, I should I should do a better than show the score. I think people also see score buffs. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. what I will do, I'm gonna play a segment of whatever, whatever score I just showed you just now. Okay. Uh, I'll play it once through as so you know how it sounds like. Okay. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to sound like eventually, but you will never ever sound like this the first time you play. Okay, so when you first learn the piece, you are learning the notes. You're going to sound something like this. Good idea. So more often than not, you probably sound like this. So really, really take your time with this. So use this time to get it right. Once you slowly figure out where the fingers want to go, this is coming down to here. Then it comes down to here. Nope, nope. This, go back. Figure out the fingering. Okay, I want to use this, write it down. Okay, you realize that you're not playing anything coherent now. That's normal. Okay, you want to get it right first. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, the second step is to focus on the rhythm. Once you kind of, this is level two, right? once you kind of got the notes right, you want to make sure your head is hearing it right. Okay, so get the rhythm right first or second. So even if you make a mistake, this time you focus on not stopping. Okay, and, and so on and so forth. You want to get the, the beat and the rhythm right. So in internally you are getting you're getting the right feel. Okay, so notice uh, step one and step two is really very different. One is one, the, the notes is really the building block, and the rhythm is more of the, the, the feeling of where the notes are placed against each other. So when I play rhythm, right, notice that I just ignore the wrong notes. I, I, I deliberately play a lot of wrong notes just now. So that's an example. Okay, so don't let it, don't be affected by it. A lot of students, when they, the moment they hear wrong notes, they, they freak out and then they will stop. And then they try again, and then they stop. So in a sense, I feel that they are kind of denying themselves the the, the chance of practicing rhythm, the chance of hearing the rhythm correctly. That's why I, I feel uh, a lot of students, that they, they struggle with rhythm more than they struggle with notes. Because us Singaporeans, we, we love to get notes correct, like the content must be correct, that kind. All right, so focus on the, on the rhythm second. And the third thing, um, once you start to get these things going already, you, you keep practicing, it's slowly starting to get better. Then look at the score again. You start to notice things like your dynamics, volume. Notice your articulation. Notice how you phrase the notes and expression. Okay. If you can, sing the line out. Okay. So for example, in, in this in this piece, okay, it sounds something like da, 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 da. you kind of drop. It's a it's a line that's coming down. So it's almost like a sigh. Da, 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 da. So you want to get softer. Okay? If you want to really express it, you get softer. And then as you go on to the next phrase. Da, 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 da. So you get a little bit louder as you climb up. It's kind of an instinctive thing if you think about expression. All right? So that's the next step. Okay? As you think about these little details, you know, confirm it with your score. Sometimes the score has the information, sometimes it doesn't, you might want to write it in. Okay, so check with your teacher. Most of the time, I guess teachers are usually dictating it, but I think as students, you know, especially if you're intermediate level, you might want to start 
listening out for these kinds of details as you get to a higher level, right? And um, the, the next thing, uh, I'll go back to the slides later. I'll just read it out for you guys. Uh, as your notes and your rhythm and all your expression becomes more autopilot, okay, because by now you have developed a kind of a muscle memory, more or less, then this is where you start focusing on your tone and balance. Okay, so what I mean by tone and balance, when you first, when you first learn a piece, right, or a song, when you're focusing on notes or rhythm, you sound something like this. Something like that, right? Annoying, maybe from, for, from an outsider's point of view, it might sound a bit jarring, okay? because it's not, you're not thinking expressive yet. So once you, uh, familiar with notes, this is where you start to think about how you want to express this. This line is supposed to be a very smooth line. Okay, even if I'm not using the pedal, okay, legs, legs away, there's a way to play it smoothly. Okay, so if you use a good fingering, the right fingering, you should be able to, by now, as you are learning the piece, if it's correct, it should sound great once you start to put the expression in. Okay, and the next thing, balance. Balance is more for um, higher level playing. Uh, what do I mean by balance? Uh, I'm gonna play you this, this phrase twice, and let's see, let's see if maybe people in the audience can hear what the difference is. I know the, I hope the audio quality isn't so bad. This is example one. This is example two. Okay, so maybe just as some audience participation, and let's see if anyone could hear the difference in it. Anyone? Okay, so you can hear the difference between the two phrases played by Mark. You can just key in. If not sure, I, I can I can always play it again. So this is the first one. Okay, you play again. First one. I think there's a hmm, absolutely comment. The first one is like a lot more chords or something like that. A yeah, lot heavier. yeah, a lot heavier. Okay, something you, you're hearing it heavier. Uh, I, of course, uh, <laughs> I hear it. okay, okay, yeah. This is like the uh, oral right exam issue. You, you want to, yeah, look it away. <laughs> it's, <more laughs> oh, it's like for the difference, right? Yeah, yeah, there's one component like that. I used to love it, you know, it's quite fun. Yeah, number two is way better, right? So, any idea, like why why it sounds better? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, Tansi is getting it. The right hand sounds more distinct in the second one. The first one has the first one's feeling. I I find is more jagged. The second one is smoother. Okay, and why it sounds like the right hand is more distinct is because. I am putting all the emphasis on the, the top notes. So the top fingers are playing all the stuff, all the emphasis, and the, the rest of the notes below are just, yeah, 
left hand too heavy for first play melody trying to yeah you guys got it so you guys are pros wow. it's not like yeah <laughs> seems like we have uh, many uh mu musically trained years over here very good so yeah, yeah i can hear you yeah so, so what uh this is what balance is right and it's not mm -hmm. easy this this is one of the hardest one of the harder things to train for musicians i find that it's very very difficult for for teachers to to, to teach students how to play with balance yeah, because whatever i just did right i i'm using just on one hand one finger more strength than the rest don't even talk about hands separate okay so on one hand i'm having different strengths on different fingers so this is a very difficult thing to play around with and i think when you first um if you take ABRSM exams, usually the the pieces that are chosen, they will slowly make you uh, work towards balance where you have different weights per hand, not per finger, not per finger yet. What I just did is per finger, okay, but you start off with using, uh, having more sound on one hand than the other. So that is that is pretty, pretty tough to, to achieve. So, but then again, these kind of things take practice. How, however, I figured it out. I used my, my teacher used to scold me so much about this. Like, right hand louder, boy, left hand is too loud. So one day I got so so irritated by by, by having the same by being scolded about the same thing so long, right? I decided to slam the right hand and barely play the left hand. So uh after, after, for some reason, after up in that frustration, I triggered something that, that I I suddenly figured out how to to I accidentally figured out how to play with, with two different balances. So, um, however, however way it works, I mean, I don't have a surefire way of solving this problem because uh, psychomotor skills is different for everyone. So yeah, as a uh, going back to topic, this is a higher level thing. Okay, uh, higher level. When I say higher level, I don't mean it must be a grade seven and above kind of thing. Higher level means whichever song you play, even if you're a, beginner, you're a grade one level. When you play a piece until it sounds so good, right? Or you think it sounds so good, there's always a way to make it better. And these, these ideas, balance and sounding nice, you know, is something that you, you know, newer, newer learners can start to think about. Rather than just, I reach this level and I, I continue playing the same way. That's, uh, people can do better than that. I think people are learning music, if you're really interested, to make it sound good, you know, you can work towards this kind of idea. Wow, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Uh, okay, let, let me do a quick poll. Uh. How many of you love uh, Mark sharing so far on piano and uh, and uh, his uh, his earlier childhood with a music teacher? If you love, you just type, uh, uh, type I love it, I love it. <laughs> my, God, my childhood is being judged right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me go back to the screen. Huh? The, okay, the good, good, good. Wow, I'm also learning something here. Hmm. So you know, as we grow older, now we look back at what we do last time to our teachers. Uh, I think cannot can be quite funny. <laughs> yeah, looking back, I always think about how the how much headache I caused my teacher. How rebellious you are also. <laughs> I wasn't that bad, la, but I had my moments. La. Yeah, all of us have, all of us have. <laughs> Okay, that's on idea too. Very good. Thanks for demonstration yeah. as well. So just to, to cap it off, uh, mm. last point, based on all these factors, right, you, you want to become autopilot for some of the factors. Okay? And the easiest ones are always the notes and the rhythm. It, it takes time, but you cannot expect to be so to learn too fast, like, take your time with it. As you become autopilot, you start to think about other things. So yeah, this basically is idea number two. Okay, so moving on, if not, we'll take forever. Mm -hmm. Metronome. Okay, this this is a, a very interesting topic to talk about because I think some people might disagree with me. Okay, the first couple of things is that the metronome, the thing that goes tick tock, tick tock, will help with your finger control, okay, especially with fast pieces. Okay, it helps improve your stability, but however, it's, it, you need to learn a skill, right? And this skill is to learn how to play the metronome first. Okay. Almost every student I have, even myself, when I was a student, I hated the metronome. I think everybody will agree with me. It's this annoying thing that suddenly it's faster than you, and suddenly it's slower than you, and you feel like you're right, and the metronome is wrong. You know, so 
I, I used to think that way and I hated it so much. And um, this, it, it, took a, it took a long time for, for me to understand how to play along with it, how to, how to, to accommodate to this annoying little instrument. Yeah, I know. So teachers love it, yes. I preach it, but my students hate it as well. And perhaps this is karma coming back to bite me la, when, I, when I used to hate the metronome so much. Now you're a teacher. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. And um, the thing is, it takes skill to, to, to play along with it and to anticipate this thing. But the thing is, once you get used to it, right, you can focus a lot on other factors already while keeping stable. So you are using the metronome to, to remove one factor and the factor is tempo. If you're good at it, Okay, so you remove tempo, you start to think about other things. Okay, and then the next two points, right? Point number four, this is the, the very interesting one that I, I, I use to practice my difficult pieces. Practice with slow metronome increments. Okay, just now when you saw that I was showing you my score, and I showed that the, at the very top of the score was a metronome marking, 110 to 132. Mm -hmm. okay, what I used to do for this piece, is that I would play about two pages of music at 110. So let me just give an example. So this is 100, This is what 110 sounds like. I guess you can hear it. So what I would do, right, is do this. And then, mark, mark, mark. Oh. You want to shift down your camera a bit? Shift oh, down. sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, oh, wait, that's, sorry, sorry. That's not 110. No, no. Okay, this is 110. And once I'm done, right? I play through two pages plus two. So now it's 112. I'm done with two pages, plus two, 114, 116, 118, all the way until it's 132. That means I would have played that those two pages, okay, my math is failing me now, 22 divided by two. I would have played the two pages 11 times on a metronome. So what, what do I do when I do this, right? Uh, I focus a lot on notes. I focus a lot on, when, especially when I'm slow, right? The, I listen very carefully to what the line sounds like. Is the melody nice? Is the bass too loud? Is the middle voicing, the middle voices, whatever's in between, is it causing a lot of mayhem? Is, is it too short? Is it too, too, too heavy? Depending on the piece. Okay, so this is what I do. I take the time to, to observe the slow ones. And then as it gets faster, right? the fast ones practice the stability to run fast. So I'm solving a lot of issues, right, at the same time. It's just that um, the problem with this, this way of practicing right, is what I call, I, I call hardcore practice. Huh? So it takes a lot of patience. It's very, very tiring because you repeat things over and over and over again. And imagine playing like a, a, a sonata that's like 10, 12 minutes long, <laughs> and you break it into like five, five different parts times 11, or 12 times each. You know, by the time I finish playing one, one movement, right, I got no time for anything else. That's why I, this why I, I nickname, I personally nickname this the hardcore practice. And uh, you, you can't do this every day. If you do this every day, I guarantee you, you will hate music. Okay, do not do this every day. Do it on days that are good, when you can, when you feel that you want to be productive, you need the grit to, to get through and sound great. You know, if you are feeling motivated, then do it. Okay, but don't do for all the pieces, the, the difficult ones, the ones that require control, the ones that you think require the most work. I think this metronome practice is very effective, very time consuming, very tiring physically, mentally. It's basically the gym day where you're on an insanity workout. This is, this is the hardcore metronome practice that I, I would usually do. Right, so it's kind of different from, I mean, different teachers tell teacher the use of the metronome very differently. And some would say, 
I mean, some would use this idea, but maybe not on such long pieces. And some would just say something like, use a slower tempo. But perhaps if you're a student uh, and you have teachers who've told you this before, maybe you might want to ask them more about what they do on their own pieces. I'm sure they would like to share. You know, so this, um, like I said, this particular hardcore metronome practice is not for everyday use because it's very tiring. Okay, so consult your teachers because this is a very good way, but you need to do it properly. If you're doing it with wrong technique, wrong posture, you're crossing your legs when you're practicing this, chances are you're gonna like hurt yourself or something. So be careful when you do it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Can let me okay, so if you if you guys have any questions regarding metronome, I know this might be a this is an idea, but it's a slightly controversial idea that not everybody might agree. Uh, just feel free to comment on what you think about it. Okay, so moving on to the next idea, number four. You might have heard this before too. Record yourself. Okay, um, I would say this is more for intermediate to advanced levels. Okay, uh, firstly, when you record yourself, you are becoming a third party. You record your own playing, and then you're going to listen to yourself as an audience of yourself. Okay, so you'll be surprised at the new discoveries when you hear yourself as a third person. You're going to realize that, oh my gosh, I sound so terrible. Oh, I'm rushing this. I'm slowing down for that. I have so many wrong notes. You know, things that you probably never heard before. The, the dirty secrets are going to come out, and they're going to spill all over into your ears when you replay your own music. Okay. So why, why do this to yourself? Because if you as an audience don't like what you sound, you obviously don't sound good, right? So if you really want to sound good, just not only to yourself, but you know, in general to people, okay? So not only yourself, but your friends, your family members, you can enjoy what you're playing. It, it'll be a nice thing to, to record yourself playing. Truly. Okay, and the advantage of that as well, looking at the second point, you can replay your annoying sounding recording many times, as many times as you want. Okay, and from there, every time you replay something, right, you replay the same song, you focus on different factors too. So now I'm mixing the previous point, huh? you focus on the notes, where do you have the wrong notes? The next time you replay it, you focus on the rhythm, where do you have wrong rhythm? Next time you replay it, focus on the sound, tempo, we rushing, we dragging. So things like that. You know, you can even, I would even call this practice, even though you're not physically on the keys, but you are really listening to, to improve how you want to sound like. Okay, so what is good about this thing in today's era of technology, you do not need expensive equipment, unlike the past, a phone is good enough. Today's uh, Today's 4G, 5G phones are very, very good devices. If, uh, yeah, they can record um, even the, the bass frequencies, they actually pick it up very well these days. Okay, the only thing that you probably need is that when you replay, when you play the sound back, uh, I recommend that you use headphones like the one I'm using or the in earbuds, the one that goes in with the rubber the soft rubber that goes in. So you can hear exactly all the frequencies of sound. Because if you play back the, uh, the recording off the phone or maybe off your laptop speaker, the, the quality may not be there. It may sound very scratchy and sound very, very treble. Okay, so the, the problem with the technology is not the, the mic. The mic is fine. The problem with the technology is the, the speakers itself that you want good sound coming out of it. That's if you want to listen. But anyway, these, um, in earbuds are very easy to get right well, at least for i know whenever i buy like uh, samsung phone i change the phone they, they usually give a very nice uh, standard issue in earbuds or earpiece so that's um that's that's pretty decent and it's not it's not bad at all so yeah i would say like it's not you don't have to invest like the, the most expensive headphones and all that it's, it's it's okay you just need at least something that has a uh, Something that covers the ear or the, the rubber ones that go into your ear. Those are those are great. Right? Okay, we have so, a question. 
So Tan Chi asks, uh, is it for, do you record video or just as the sound recording? Oh, it just, oh, it depends. Um, sometimes I would record sound because no. I don't want to see myself. But if you are, if you want to focus on your posture, you want to, you want to take note of your maybe fingering or how you sit or how you look like as a stage presence, you know, then perhaps video is good. If not, don't bother wasting, wasting, uh, wasting your, your space on your phone. Video takes out a lot of space. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, Paul mentioned, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a very good point. When you record, right, uh, you might want to put it up, Mark. Uh, when you record, sometimes uh, try to have as little background noise if you can. So I know you can't you can't control the birds that are screeching out there or the garbage truck mm -hmm. that zooms past. Yes, but um, mm -hmm. it's this kind of thing can be help. But if you if you can close the window, maybe switch on the corn. Maybe it's a hot day. By all means, go ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. if you have no choice but to use a fan, okay. Uh, at least point the microphone away from the fan. Or else you'll hear just wind and <laughs> wasting your time. Correct. Yeah, this, this, uh, I'm saying this because I, I've lately been doing lots of, uh, quite a few recordings. I, I did one for my recital and honestly, right, I submitted my phone audio. I recorded using my phone and I used the audio from the phone as my final recital recording. Mm -hmm. It was good enough. It wasn't the best, but it was decent. So it's fine. So if I can submit a phone recording and pass a master's program without, without uh, getting scolded for the bad wow. quality, it's fine. Okay. We, have, we have good technology these days. That's great. That's good. Yeah. All right, then um, next, this is the last one. And I would say this is more for intermediate to advanced levels. Mental practice. What is this? Uh, basically, mental practice is looking at your score. Instead of playing it right, run the score in your head. Sing it to yourself in your head, the way you want it to sound. It means with all the expressions, how you express it. Don't just da 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 da. That, that doesn't work. Okay, that's that's just. I don't know, that's like singing a toilet standard, right? Mm -hmm. So in your head, I, does, I don't mean that you need to, to say it out loud, okay? But in your head, imagine what it sounds like. And I, I believe that that um, because I'm someone who, who, is, uh, who believes a lot in oral skills, like uh, listening skills, whatever you hear in your head, right? It's actually very, very powerful. It's a very, it's a very powerful tool that can, that can make you improve as a musician very, very quickly, make you very perceptive as a musician, if you're listening to yourself and if you know how to do it. Okay, so what I mean by, by this, ju just for example, when I gave you the, the example of my the, the piece I was playing just now, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I can hum it like that, but I'm singing it out to you guys. But you can do the same thing in your head without without actually saying it out loud, okay? And these things, sometimes when you pay attention to, to such details, you realize like, hey, how come I sound so nice in my head, but I don't sound nice on piano? Because whatever you're doing on piano versus in your head is different. This is where you learn. This is where you realize, and this is where you apply and change, right? So you don't really, really, uh... okay, I'm jumping to the last point. Huh? You don't really, really need your score all the time if you know your score well, or at least if you know most of the parts well. If you want to do this at, in to fill your time, especially when you're traveling in an inconvenient place, like on a bus, on a train, on a grab, uh, what is it called now? Music grab, or Uber grab, uh, on a grab to work. You know, you've got nothing to do rather than to just rather than to just surf Facebook. You can think about these things. Okay, I found myself involuntarily doing this when I used to take the bus to and from school because I was bored and the person beside me had very annoyingly loud earphones that are blasting music. So I wanted my own music, so I just sing to myself in my head. But I don't sing it out loud, so, so I don't sound like a computer. Right? So you can do it in your head, it's fine. 
Okay, so it's um going back to the previous point, the second point, you will notice that sometimes where you need to run especially maybe faster notes, right? The parts that get blurry in your head, right? You are, you can you are just uh, you're kind of saying that in your head, uh, rather than a very clear sound, chances are those are the problematic parts when you play as well. Mm. Wow. So it's something to think about. I, I never ever realized this until recently, within the last year. So it's a, it's an idea you, you guys can try. But if you're new to the if you're new to the instrument, whichever instrument you're playing, um, new to the point that like not about the instrument, like new as a musician, if you find that this singing thing in your head is very daunting, you do not know what to hear, it's okay. Okay, uh, different people perceive at different levels, perceive sound and music at different levels. So you probably feel like that because you are not used to, to understanding or you're not used to, to listening or, or humming out music very much or you're not, or maybe throughout your, your younger days, you never listened to very, very much music. So maybe it, to you, like everything sounds the same or you feel like you're tone deaf, uh, which I disagree, tone deafness doesn't exist, but then you may feel that way. Okay, but that's because there is, you haven't had a kind of, a, you haven't developed a mental system in your head yet to, to understand these sounds. So if you feel that you are, you fall within this category, uh, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Okay, like I said, uh, these kinds of skills can develop. You can take time to develop them. Uh, maybe this is not for you at the moment. So give the other, give the other ideas a shot first if you find that this is too difficult. Okay, so these are my five ideas wow. uh, of how you can play around in practice and make it a bit more efficient. Because if you do it well, you don't have to relearn things. You don't have to waste time um, unlearning or breaking a bad habit. So like uh, mo most of these points um, that I share are all based on these things that your piano teacher or music teacher has already told you about. Okay, mm -hmm. so Hopefully this is this is useful and very big thank you for, for staying all the way for most of you. Wow, there's still a lot of people here. Thank you. Wow, I'm so glad so that I'm, I'm entertaining enough for you to, to spend your Friday nights with me. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for preparing the notes for us. So for those of you uh, who join us midway and you miss out some of the past, some of the notes, don't worry. We'll be compiling the every every uh, the entire notes and then we'll be sending out in the Happy Pianist Telegram channel. So if you would like to have the notes, we will just uh, like the, I mean, you join the Telegram channel once Mark has compiled the notes, then we'll be sending out. So you can go back and refer and see which idea you can work on. So uh, like Mark has shared some ideas you may have tried before, you are quite familiar. If that's good, then just continue. Then along the way, if you want to try out new practice style, practice methods, just come and try out a few here and there. If you're not very sure, you still can ask your teacher to guide you along. Because I believe some some of them your teachers already know. Okay, so if any questions, just feel free to key in your questions. We maybe take about about ten more minutes to answer any questions you have. So Mark has uh, purposely have this uh, entire uh, Facebook live session just on practice alone, just on practice. Okay, so you have been practicing uh, for. Some oh, what happened to Mark? Okay, something weird happened. Hello? Okay, so I pressed something wrong. Oh, yeah. oh, you pressed something wrong, okay. Okay, then I disappeared. Okay, so yeah, any question, just leave it there. Then uh, Mark can uh, answer for you. Just to share what, uh, what Mark has just mentioned about going to ask your teachers about these, uh, just to share with you personal experience as a teacher, right? Sometimes, mm -hmm. There are things that we teachers, I, I guess I can say for all the piano teachers who are watching this, sometimes there are things that you want to tell your student so much because they will benefit them, but they but you can't or you don't want to tell them because you the, the student is not really at the level to understand things yet. Or telling them will make things a bit more confusing, or it's or it may make the matter worse, even though it's a good idea. You know, so not all ideas are, are, are great. 
So if you, you ask your teacher about this, I, I'm sure your teacher would love to, to talk to, to you more about these kinds of things. Okay, Sometimes maybe they, they don't blurt out all these kinds of things because they don't want to sound too naggy or they don't want to bombard you with too much information. Oh yeah, Mark, See, maybe uh, yeah. I have a question for you, okay? So, uh, so you, you are now a teacher yourself, okay? So you're top big. Uh. Uh, do you have any requirements uh, of how much your students need to practice be before they attend your lesson? Like, you know, let's say lessons are every, do you have a requirement for them to, uh, to practice like, like, or every day, how, how, how much time to practice, you know, just to, I, just to keep up with your progress? I, I don't have a, I don't have a very strict guideline for my students to to practice. So I don't tell them like, you know, you need to clock one hour a day. Uh, that's that's not really my teaching style. Well, because I kind of believe that, I mean, I understand that most of my students, they have a lot of things to do, you know, whether they're in school or they have, their job keeps them so busy. And, you know, some, sometimes they even have trouble, some of them even have trouble like, even attending my lessons because they are just so packed with things and, and yeah, so many comments in there. So I don't, um, I don't want to make music learning uh, uh, an experience that like they are forced to do this and you have no choice and to add on to their burdens. You know, so I don't, I don't usually tell people that you must practice this amount of time, but I will usually tell them like, depending on how, how busy they are, if they are someone who is very very busy, I'll tell them, you know, perhaps if you can, if you can just do like half an hour every two days, right? This is an example of that I, I remember telling someone before, if you can do half an hour for two days, right? But you make sure you complete this, 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 so-and-so, this particular scale, and it sounds like that, and you work towards your piece sounding like that, half an hour and half a day. Wow. Sometimes I tell, I tell them mm -hmm. these kind of things. But I will be quite specific about it. Lah. So I don't really, really believe in in telling students very generic things like, hey, practice for two hours every day. It's mm. it's very easy for us as, as educators to, to say, you know, because mm. you can just come out of our mouths like that. And it yeah. saves a lot of breath. Okay. Mm. Uh, but I think we, we got to be careful of what, you know, the more underlying things that we the more underlying messages we, we send to them. Because just telling them to practice two hours a day, maybe especially if you're telling younger younger kids, right, who are like mm. 15 and below or something, you know, and they're busy with school, they want to play games, they want to play with their phones and whatever. It's and and telling them, phrasing it in such a way is going to give them the impression that hey, music is so difficult. Music needs so much time. You're not phrasing it in a way that makes things interesting. You're not phrasing it in a way that helps them solve the problem. You know, just playing for two hours is just an instruction. It, I find that that holds very, very little value, and it doesn't, like, uh, yeah, it doesn't solve anything. Hmm. Because a student can just go home and, and be a zombie and just play stuff for two hours and <laughs> fall asleep while playing. It's happened to me before, but like, it's not, it's not useful. So. It really, really depends on, on on how they practice, which is why I, which is why this this is a topic for today, and mm -hmm. I guess that's why a lot of people were asking me for the last session. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's say you talk about this, uh, like don't practice as a zombie, you know, you practice until you really hate piano, la. So let's say you have a student, la, okay, maybe a new student who want to start learning from you, and previously, this student has been practicing the wrong way, play, play the piano, play until very boring, you know, it's not making any progress. Uh. That means this student really hate, hate practicing, uh, hate, hate practicing. So right now you got, a, you got a chance to advise him accordingly. What kind of words will you say? Okay, this, this I say it as a context of, uh, let's say, uh, piano teachers. Sometimes you, you encounter this kind of students. They learn from somewhere or, or rather their parents force them to practice every day until they really hate hate all this, but they love playing the piano. So they hate practice, but they love playing the piano. So what oh. kind of advice can you tell this kind of student? 
you you cannot tell oh, them. This, uh, this, don't practice. I uh, cannot tell them. Uh. So yeah, 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 of course. Uh, <laughs> Now, this is usually the more fun students to deal with because if you are dealing with uh, students who love the instrument but they're just lazy right mm. all you need to do right is to just point out point out the very good musical qualities they have mm. but because they don't practice right they are only like that mm. so I, I would call it a guilt trip but it's more on how you this is okay, this is not so much on, on on making them practice this is not so much on telling them how to practice it's mm. it's more of how you communicate with your student to to help them see their own potential sometimes mm. they are just lazy right because i mean you ask me to choose between practicing and netflix obviously i choose netflix right uh. <laughs> you know actually i'll choose practicing but that's just me but if if you choose um uh, if you have a student like that, you know, maybe maybe they don't practice so much, not only because they're lazy, maybe they just are like that because no one has told them of the strengths that they have before. No one has, you know, we, a lot of us are in, in a society where where it seems that the faults are the, are the loudest points of criticisms rather than the good things. Mm -hmm. And perhaps maybe some students may have had experience with like um people relatives or friends who have always thumbed them down or you know say hey your skills is so noisy don't play scales you know people who may not understand the craft you know they, they may have had um interactions like that that are quite detrimental to motivation so perhaps may the chances are these, these kinds of students may have never heard uh, of their the good things about their potential mm. and you know it's it's our jobs as uh, educators to to help them understand that we cannot only be sticking to a mindset that you know my job is to teach you and and there's that whether you're good or bad is you're good or bad that, that doesn't develop the individual that doesn't develop the compassionate side of mm. of what music can teach yeah wow. i hope that answers the question Powerful. Wow, very good, very good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, you made a very good point that uh, it's not just you no know, teaching and teaching for the sake of teaching. Uh. You are, I think you are also building up a, a student confidence, uh, become a good person itself. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So we are okay. I think wow, it's about one hour, about one hour twenty seven minutes. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us on the Friday evening. I hope everyone have enjoyed this session so far. So we make it very interactive. So no, when Mark say want to talk about practice, so we got a keyboard for him to show us how to practice. So if you love what we are doing so far, you can give us a love, a love shape. So a love shape in the in the chat box below, so that we know uh, you like whatever we shared so far. And if you love future topics, any questions you want us to address, you want Mark to uh, showcase another kind of performance or another topic that you are interested in, just key in the comments below. So if if uh, Mark has the time, okay, he got time to prepare the materials, we will get it on there. If sometimes if your question is too out of the world or you know, uh, not something that Mark is able to address, doesn't matter. We will go find somewhere, some teachers out there to address these questions for you. So as long as you are keen on to find out the answers, we will find out some teachers to share with you. Okay, so Mark, this is the second Facebook Live I've done with you so far. How do you think? Not I think bad, it's right? great. I, I I just need to remember that to have a water bottle beside me. <laughs> I nearly forgot today. Yeah, I got, I got some idea. Left. Some 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 people tell me this idea. I say, hey, how why not we just do a live performance on Facebook Live? La? Some people tell me this, la, okay? That means uh, uh like like the it's like the whole whole show is you performing, la. it's like watching a live concert, you know, like recently there's a May Day concert. Yeah. Uh, so, so if we, I, I do something like that, la, with you performing your repertoire. To a Facebook Live audience, uh. I know, I know, I know, I know. You are using your own uh, uh, digital keyboard, la, not the Steinway those kind of grand keyboard, la. but still doable, la. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. I, I need to find pieces first. <laughs> yeah, good, I, and okay. I need to practice. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. But so thanks fine. for all the ideas. Good. Okay. So oh, Tanchi has a question on sight reading. Wow, this one is a very oh, another big topic. This is a headache. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a headache, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. 
no no musicians like uh not not say don't like lah okay we, I'm, I'm sure we all can say it but it's a struggle to learn uh, at the start okay yeah it's a struggle like, it's like learning a new, new language you have to recognize uh how to read notes okay so set reading hmm, can be a good topic to discuss uh, maybe too big a topic we can uh lower it down to you know simplify a bit yeah apple okay. also says set reading <laughs> okay just yes. take note of any questions that have all right yeah, I okay, think that could so, be the next hmm. next topic, sure. Are we gonna okay, come back reading. at least? Hmm. Wow, okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, That's great. Yeah, so for just a quick uh quick update a bit. Okay, if you talk about it, so this Facebook Live is not really uh a live lesson, I, I would say lah. Okay, because I believe site reading is cannot be done just in a one hour, then you oh watch video and you learn like that. But what Mark can do is to simplify the understanding for you, maybe give you some practice tips and some like I said, the ideas. So when at least you learn, you can take a few more steps forward and make your reading better. It'll be quite helpful. Okay, of course, if you want to challenge Mark, right, then maybe you send, you, you key in a piece of song that you love to play. Then let him start it on the spot for you. Wow. Okay, la. okay la. we sure. don't do this kind of thing. <laughs> I think at your level, I think at your level, maybe, I think at your level, side reading is not an issue. La. Or, or, I mean, given that you I played so many pieces, uh, uh, a wide range of repertoire, you still, you still may struggle, kind of, no? But I think should be fine, lah. That, that's it, the skill you have. Uh, right? it's, a kind of, uh, it's a different kind of struggle. It's the 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 problem is still there, but the mindset is different. Uh. <laughs> yeah, still a problem. <laughs> Okay, it's good, it's good. Okay, thanks for the time over here. Okay, it's about 10 p.m. Thank you so much for being with us for about one and a half hour. So uh, if you are keen on the notes, okay, just uh, join our Happy Planning Telegram. You'll find out more about Mark. Very easy, you just go to his website at markyo.com or you can WhatsApp him, any more questions. So he's very friendly to talk to. Okay, I've known him for like, what, four years already. And the thing is, uh, we want to do something like this. For some time, so this month, since uh, if everyone's still at home, we are still doing live. Okay, so you're happy to get Mark here again. Okay, just send your questions and enough questions, enough demand, you'll just uh, get Mark to come back again. Okay, the two marks here will be uh, be on the show again. All right, so that's all, Mark. Okay, have, good to have you on the show. Okay, yeah, thank so, you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Friday, sure, if good anything night. you want to message me, just feel free. And thanks so much for, for spending such a long time with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Apple. I think uh, last week I also see you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Wilson. Thanks, Apple. Thanks, Wilson, Tansi, thank Crystal, <laughs> Andre, and everybody else, Yvonne, yeah, Paul. It. Paul, thanks for joining me. Fellow piano teacher. Wow. Good, good. Okay, we hope to have more musicians here. If you are if you are keen on other topics, like let's say you are playing the guitar or you want to talk about what? I don't know, violin, singing. Uh, just let us know. I find singing teachers for you. Like, Mark, can you sing or not? Can I? Can I? Just now you hum a bit. Like. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a singer. I'm a hummer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> so you love you learn singing or any other topics, then you let us know. Like. Okay, Mark, if for piano, I'll just get Mark. Okay, to talk about piano stuff over here. Okay, so I'll end this broadcast. Hope to see you in the next session. Bye bye. Yeah, bye everybody. Good night. Thanks for joining. Bye.